Okay, cool. And you see mm -hmm. my screen? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna um, just gonna check out a random branch here. So I'm on a, a branch. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't like that that jumped over there. That's fine. Um, mm -hmm. So everything, a lot of the commands that we're going to be run are going to be set based on this make file. Um, yeah. So there's like, yeah, so there's init airflow, then there's actual airflow. Um, and you can mm -hmm. see like this is where that, that git branch comes into play. Um, so what what should be happening? So like first thing I would do is um, export my git branch. I can pull this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Export git branch. Cool. And then from the analytics uh, repo. So this branch, this has to be a remote branch. Um, no, no it, it doesn't. I mean, you'll. Well, actually, yeah, you're probably probably right. I should push it up. Um, because Airflow is going to, like, if you run a job, it's going to look for, um, it's going to clone the repo for that branch mm -hmm. based on what you said. So, yeah. Okay, so I just push, push the empty branch. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so we'll do making it Airflow. And it should. And you are pushing to the analytics project, not to the, uh, to the infrastructure. Correct. This is, yeah, this is all run in the analytics project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that gets everything um, kind of prepped and ready. And then all you unmake airflow and it's going to spin up the web server um, mm -hmm. locally. So now you're, um, you're in the Docker container. And then if you come to localhost 8080, you'll see this is our, yeah, this is just like what's based on what's in the repo. Um, you'll probably yeah. have to log in. Um, I think the password is just admin, admin. Um, mm -hmm. should work fine. So just to clarify, you are now like on the Docker container for Air Airflow web server, not scheduler, not, in, not the executor. It's the web server. Yeah, the, yeah, this is the uh, the web server. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so from here, what what would happen is like you would just turn on any jobs that you want, and they're going to run in the testing namespace um, in in Kubernetes. So I don't have a one thing you would probably want, depending on what you're testing. Um, oh, so there's no commit, so I don't know if I can make a pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no commits. Okay, so I'm going to make a random commit just so that something can change. Uh, let's mm -hmm. add a space here. <laughs> okay. So now back in the mm -hmm. request, a pipeline should be kicked off. Hopefully. And then um, most, like if you're running Airflow, you're, um, most of the jobs are going to be writing against the raw um, database. And so you'll want to have a clone of raw ready. So um, come in here and, and run this job. It takes like, 20 to 30 minutes, unfortunately. Um, okay. But we can go ahead so, and go ahead. So there will be like a so there will be like a clone of the row that is created. It's not like it exists already for the testing. So right, every time is. I run this pipeline, it will recreate the clone. So every time it will take extra 20, 30 minutes. No, well, no, just the first time. So just the first time. Okay. Yeah, just the first time. So what's it? So the the clone of analytics is is a shallow mm -hmm. clone. It just um, it basically creates a new database with the, the proper name. Um, and so we can look in the logs here and it's not, it's not actually a real clone um, because it, it would take a, it was, 
we have Snowplow data in the analytics side on the analytics warehouse and it was taking a long time. And so if you need a real clone of analytics, we have a job for that. Um, there's a, there's the, the clone analytics reel. And now that, that actually does like a full Snowflake clone. This one is just the shallow clone, which basically makes the, the name like your branch name underscore analytics. Um, and it this job runs every time you push um, code, but all it's doing is just checking that the, the database exists essentially. Um, when you run the clone raw, it only runs however many times you push the button. Um, so we run it once and then it's available for all of the other pipelines because it's going to look for that clone. But cloning raws is a real clone and it copies everything basically. Um, and then there's a job that you can clone both if you need, for whatever reason, if you need both the raw and the anal analytics clone. So if I like just want to check if like the data, for example, has been loaded correctly, I can just go to Snowflake and see the, is there like a separate database I can just go over there and see the result? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, let me pull mm -hmm. up. Right here real quick. So in the sidebar here, we should see mm -hmm. um, analytics testing branch analytics. And that's the one that was created by the automatic job. And then um, it's in the process of creating the, the clone for raw. Um, and it'll, it'll show up in the sidebar here. So you'd be able to, to come in and see whatever. Mm -hmm. It would just be a, a match to, to raw. Um, but, but like I said, the, the analytics one is just a shallow clone. There's literally nothing in here. But that, that way, like DBT will run against this, this clone instance instead of the actual real instance. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, so let's just pretend like the, the raw job was done. Um, I'm gonna do, let's just do sheet load. So we can go ahead and turn it on and it should automatically trigger a job um, just because once you turn the job on, Airflow's like, you know, starts trying to schedule yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, but it'll take a minute. So yeah. yeah. Analysis. So do you you have access to GCP? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So um, in here, so we have um, the BizOps runner, which is what's running all of the the jobs in here. They all get run by that cluster. And then data ops, which is where the production airflow and the testing airflow instance jobs run. Um, so this is the main cluster. And then the workloads tab is typically where the more interesting aspect is. So um, most everything runs in the default namespace. So we have the deployment. This is the Nginx um, ingress and controller. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, well, the, the web server is a service. but you can see like this is the incremental um, dlab.com extract running in default. And then this is an old pod that's running in the testing namespace. So um, when you're testing locally, mm -hmm. it should all run in the in the testing namespace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully- Why, why, is, this, why is the, the state of this error? Is that another problem? Um, it's, it's probably fine. I think this is probably mm -hmm. just one that's like, old that I was using. I don't know why it doesn't get cleared out. Um, okay, so sheet load has run. Um, let's see what's happening here. I think it's failing the first attempt. Or? Yeah, so as expected, this is failing because it's trying to find this raw clone um, and it's not able to, it's not able to connect. Um, I'm surprised I didn't see a pod pop up here. But maybe it was too quick and we missed it. But um, but yeah, it kind of it basically runs the same. Like it's it's running in Kubernetes, it's running in the, the testing namespace. Um, it's pulling from the, there's a secrets file for the testing namespace for Airflow. Um, 
and that's where it's pulling like all the the secrets from. So really, the only thing you should have to set locally is the the git branch. Um, yeah, and then like when when I'm testing changes, I'll I'll have the job here. Um, it reads from the well, it depends what you're changing. So if you're changing the DAG, it's going to read from your local file. If you're changing the code for a specific job, it's going to read from the remote because the job clones the remote mm -hmm. each time it runs. Um, so if you're actually changing something about um, like any of these extracts, you'll have to push your code up to the remote to get the job to see it. But if you're changing the DAGs locally, it should just be um, based on the local changes. Um, mm -hmm. And like we can test that by if I drop, let's say I just delete this DAG and then come in here, it should. So that was the snowplow full refresh. Actually, I take that back. It'll still show up because there's entries in the database. So that's a bad example. But mm, yeah. take, my, take my word for it. <laughs> yeah, I think it will like show some issue or like. Yeah, if I, cl if I click through, it'll. Well, I'm a, I'm a liar. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Yeah. DBT snowplow full refresh seems to be missing. Mm, so. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'd be curious. Um, do you want to share your screen and try to try to do this and see if we can see yeah. where it falls apart? Yeah. Okay. Let me try. Let me stop sharing. Okay, so I'm in the test branch. Um, yeah, and then yeah, I was trying to run make init airflow, and then what happened was this cannot create container for service and for scheduler. Field source must not be empty. Oh, um, maybe actually I was not. I was in master branch, but that's. Oh, so so the, you're getting a warning. So git branch mm -hmm. is not set. Yeah. Set, okay. Oh, and oh, it looks like you do need. That's right. So you do need um, cube config and then the Google application credentials. So I think that's missing. Forgot about that. Mm -hmm. And and how do I set that? Don't yeah. So great question. <clears throat> um, Okay, so I'm gonna slack you. So the, the Google application credentials are based on the, um, the runner service account that we're using. I'm pretty sure, because I don't think. Okay, so I'm gonna send these over to you via Slack and then we'll double check after the call to. Um, okay. And then I just uh, set them in, um, yeah, where, where do they have to be set? Do I set them like in my local um, profile or? You would want to set that in like your um, ZSHRC file. Okay, okay. Okay. Is there, so, once I set them, that should probably work. Yeah. So, um, so well, you, you set them. Um, we need to make sure the file, like the file, actually exists. So I'll send I'll send this file to you. Um, are you authenticated with um, GCP and Kubernetes? Like, have, have you run kubectl? I think no, not I, yeah, no, not yet. I mean, I have just installed it. But I haven't run it yet. So I have to go through this stuff. So, so okay. what, yeah, what happens if you run kubectl git pods? Git pods together? Uh, get, get get space pods. Uh, yeah, get, sorry. <laughs> git pods. It's it's G E T not it's not get it's get ah uh, yeah get box okay. okay 
Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, so do do you have, you have G Cloud installed? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do G Cloud off login. A U T H. Oh, sorry. It's off as an authorization. Off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, and actually, this is the so you have. You should have kubectl installed. So just run the. You can connect to the cluster by running that command. Um, yeah. It's fine. Yep. Perfect. And now, mm -hmm. now run the kubectl get pods. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So now you're now you're mm -hmm. authorized there. So um, so you'll set the the cube config setting in your zshrc to um, your home directory and then that dot cube um, is whatever I selected to, uh, but it should be in your home directory. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the I'll send you the application credentials while you do that. Verify that this is right because I think it's mm, yeah that's interesting okay um, okay so I'm sending yeah, you let me mm -hmm. so yeah sorry I'm sending you the the JSON file um, don't okay. well open it now no. we'll, are you we'll still make, recording right yeah <laughs> we'll make that as a private video um, okay yeah. So you can put that in your um, just wherever, and then point the um, environment variable to that directory. And then once once both of those are set, it should be should be fairly happy. Oh, uh, it can be anywhere you said. It can be anywhere. Yeah, I I have it um, like in the directory right above where I keep all of my repos, but it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then I have to export the. Mm. And uh, the cube config file. Yeah, it should just be your home directory. Um, what, whatever tilde is next mm. to you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Um, cool. And then um, I guess just source, yeah. Oh, okay, it's fine. Yeah, it, that it should still work though. Okay. Then, then just run make airflow. Okay. Cool. You're in. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Great. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So I think um, so I'm looking at the handbook and a lot of this stuff is in here. It's just like scattered about. So like under Docker mm. is where these yeah. environment variables. No, are I think honestly, I think I like we're like I think that the engineers this page is like much more important than any like some other resources that we're on onboarding. Um, okay. So I think like, I have to go through it one more time and yeah, make sure that like the resources are there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, I'll go cool. ahead and stop recording. <laughs>